Hey, Mike from Prep Pros here, and for those of you who don't already know me, I've been a full-time SAT tutor for over eight years. I've scored perfectly on the SAT myself. I've published what I think is by far the best SAT math book out there. And on the October SAT, I nailed my predictions and I had my students absolutely crush the test. So if you guys are looking for some actionable tips to help you improve your score, make sure you watch the whole video. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about some resources you can use to help you improve your score as quickly as possible as we're getting very close to testing. Now, the first thing you're definitely gonna see on your SAT are exponents. And there's two rules in particular that the SAT really loves to include. And those are your power rule and your fraction power rule. So you're gonna see this page from my SAT math book, which is gonna go over all the rules, but we're gonna get used to applying them here. Now, the first thing I'm gonna have to do is to simplify this through. I'm gonna have to use my power rule to simplify this k to the 3 halves to the 5 eighths. So our k to the 5 over 16 is gonna remain the same, but now we're multiplying these exponents, so this is gonna become k to the 15 over 16. Well, now we can add our exponents since our bases are the same, so this is gonna give us k to the 20 over 16, which is also gonna be the same as k to the 5 over 4, just by simplifying that down. This is where we need to know our fraction power rule that k to the 5 fourths is also the exact same as the fourth root of k to the fifth. Now, the next thing you're gonna see on your SAT is a topic which has been wreaking havoc and it's been showing up on almost every single SAT in 2023. This is probability tables, more specifically, probability tables with conditional probability. Now, when we work through these problems, we wanna do so in two steps. Step number one, identify the condition, which is going to eliminate part of the table. And step two, identify what we're looking for out of the remaining portion. One of these participants will be selected at random. This sentence is not important. We wanna look for the sentence where we're actually asked the question. What is the probability of selecting a participant from group A, given that the participant is at least 10 years of age? Well, here's my condition. Given the participant is at least 10 years of age, I cannot use anyone who's zero to nine years old. So now out of this remaining part of the table, we're looking for what is the probability of selecting a participant from group A, well, that's going to be made up of our 18 plus 22 out of our 60 plus 60. So this is going to be the same as 40 over 120, which will give us our correct answer of 1 over 3. Now, the third thing you're definitely going to see on your SAT is exponential growth and decay. And I'm going to pop the formula up from my book on the screen here, but make sure you get this memorized because it can make some of these very difficult questions far easier. Here we see a model estimates that at the end of each year from 2017 to 2023, the number of mice in a population was 125% more than the number of mice at the end of the previous year. The model estimates that there were 450 mice at the, in the population at the end of 2017, which of the following equations represents this model where M is the estimated number of mice in the population T years after the end of 2017 and T is less than or equal to 26, is less than or equal to six. Well, going back to that a equals p times one plus the rate to the t, well, what we know is p is our starting value. So here a is what we're solving for. So this is gonna become m equals our starting value of 450. So this goes ahead and eliminates two answer choices. Now this can be times one plus the rate of increase. Well, 125% is the same as 1.25. So we're gonna be doing one plus 1.25 raised to our number of years. And that's where we'll find our correct answer of B. Now, the next thing you're going to see on your tests are questions about interpreting constants. And these are most commonly questions about one solution, no solution, and infinite solutions with linear equations. So once again, I'm going to pop on the screen a table from my book, and then we're going to work through this question. Well, here we see one of the two equations in a linear system is 2x plus 2y equals 2. The system has no solution. Which equation could be the other equation in the system? Well, what we know for no solutions is we know that, as we saw, our x values or slopes must be the same, but our y intercepts must be different. Now, our super safe way of going through this without shortcutting it is putting this in y equals mx plus b form. So I would subtract over my 2x, then I divide everything by 2, and this will give me y equals negative x plus 1. So what I simply know is I need to have the same slope and I need to have a different y intercept as I'm going through each of these answer choices here. This is how I can kind of spot that D is gonna be correct because when I subtract over that two X and I divide by two, well, we're gonna be left with two Y equals negative two X plus three. We divide both sides by two. We're left with Y equals negative X. There's our same slope, but now we're gonna have plus three halves. So we're gonna have a same slope, different Y intercept or same, same slope, same X value, different numbers or constants. That's how we can see that D is correct, but the SAT loves these questions. 
Now, the next thing you're definitely going to see on your SAT are advanced quadratic questions. It is probably the most consistent advanced question type that we'll see on the test. Now, I don't know exactly which of these handful of question types you're going to see on your test, so we want to make sure you're prepped for all of them. Now, they're going to typically be sum of solutions questions like we're looking at here. They're going to be discriminant questions. They're going to have to deal with maximums and minimums and vertexes, or they're often going to be word problems. So here we'll start with sum of solutions and we'll talk about how you can learn the rest. Now, sum of solutions looks difficult. We can't factor this. This is in the no calc section, but it's really, really simple actually. So your sum of solutions is simply negative B over A. So our A value is three, our B value is negative two. This is simply gonna be negative, negative two over three, which simply just gives us two over three. Now, if you wanna get yourself prepared for all of those other question types I talked through, check out the free trial to my ultimate SAT course. The entire chapter on quadratics is in there along with a ton of practice. So we make sure you get those right on test day. Now, the next thing you're definitely gonna see on your SAT are statistics questions. These most commonly are asking you about standard deviation and margin of error, but there are a handful of other topics that can also pop up. So we're gonna take a look at this example about standard deviation. Now here we see the histogram shown summarize two data sets P and Q. Which of the following statements best compares the ranges and standard deviations of the two data sets? Well, what I need to understand is the range is the difference between the smallest and largest. So it's pretty easy to see that Q has a smaller range. Now standard deviation is essentially, you can think of it as a way of describing the spread of the data set. The more closely clumped together values are, the lower the standard deviation, the more spread out they are, the higher the standard deviation. So that means data set P is gonna have both a greater range and a greater standard deviation than A, and that's how we can find our correct answer there. Now we're gonna go for something hyper-specific. This has shown up a few times in 2023 and tons of students have been getting stumped by it, so I'm not gonna be surprised if they repeat it again. This is how to find the slope of a line that is tangent to a circle. Now what we simply need to understand is this line that is tangent to the circle it's going to be perpendicular to the slope of the line from the center of the circle to the point of tangency. So we simply need to find the slope of zero to P, and then we're gonna take the negative reciprocal of this. Well, here we could simply do negative four minus zero over three minus zero. So this should give us a slope of negative four thirds. So to find the perpendicular, we are going to flip the sign and flip the fraction. So that's gonna give us the slope of line K would be three fourths. Now, the next thing you're definitely going to see on your test, adding on to our last circle question, is our standard advanced circle question types. These are completing the square and questions where we need to solve for the entire equation of a circle without being given complete information. Well, what we need to understand is the equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. We're also going to go through a really helpful test trick about how we can cheat this question at the end. Well, what we know is if it's x minus h squared and h comma k gives us the center of the circle, negative three comma four, we're gonna have to see x plus three squared and y minus four squared. So I get rid of c and a. Now I just need to solve for this r squared portion. So I need to find the radius. Well, I can find the radius by finding the straight line distance between the center of the circle and a point on the circle. So we know our center is gonna be at negative three comma four, we know we're gonna have a point on our circle at negative two comma one. So from four to one, I'm going down three. And I'll move my point over here since I didn't draw this perfectly. And then from negative three to negative two, I'm going over one. So I can simply do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that would tell me that my c squared is going to be equal to 10. So that means my c value is root 10. That also tells me my radius is root 10. Well. We know what we're looking for over here is our radius squared. So that's how I can find that D is the right answer. Now the cheating way that you can go through this and you can use this so many places on the SAT is if we have a point on a line or on a shape, if we plug in our X value and we plug in our Y value and both sides of the equation are equal to each other, that tells us it's the correct equation. So when we plug in negative two and one, only equation D is going to also give us our correct value of equaling 10. Now, the next thing you're definitely going to see on your SAT are apostrophes. And what often trips students up on the test is this whole like apostrophe S versus S apostrophe. So we're going to break that down in a really easy way you can work through this. Now, if you're seeing apostrophe S on the SAT, this is going to be showing you singular possession. If you see S apostrophe, this is going to be showing you plural possession. 
Now the easiest way to approach these questions is always start with the last word that has an apostrophe. So the fragrance houses chemists many and see if it could be showing possession of the thing that follows. Well, the chemist can't possess many, that many is just describing the chemists. We're not saying the many of the chemists, this doesn't make any sense. So that tells me, well, B and D are both out because they can't be possessing many. Now we get down to A and C. And here we're just choosing whether we're showing no possession or possession. But we are saying like the fragrance houses are showing possession of the chemists. We're saying like these are the chemists of those fragrance houses. That's how we can tell that C is our correct answer. Now the last topic we're gonna talk about are misplaced modifiers, but stick around because I'm gonna talk about a handful of other grammar concepts you absolutely need to know and some of my recommendations to help you improve your score in the shortest time period possible. Now misplaced modifiers here are one of the trickier concepts that we'll see for our writing questions on the SAT. Now our modifiers are gonna be a big descriptive portion of the sentence like you see with what I've highlighted here. So in February 2018, after viewing its trailer millions of times, buying advanced tickets for it in record setting numbers and tweeting about it more than any other movie in history, well, this modifier has to be describing what comes after it or it's misplaced. So here, the superhero blockbuster cannot be viewing, buying and tweeting about something. So what we're looking for in our answer choices is what follows to be describing, be described by this modifier. And only moviegoers could be doing that that's how we can find our correct answer of C. Now, there's a handful of other grammar topics that show up every single SAT. We saw a super heavy test with sentence structure in October here. So these are all of your rules about independent and dependent clauses and about how to join them. This is one of the most important concepts to understand. And you can learn all of those in the free trial to my ultimate SAT course. Now, the other concepts that you absolutely need to understand is you really need to have your punctuation mastered. This is all of our different comma rules. This is how to use colons and dashes, which we saw quite a bit of on the October test as well. Semicolons, semicolon lists, all of the different punctuation we can see on test day. So those are really, really important to get down. Now, if you're looking to learn those and all of the other easiest places that you can improve your test, across the reading sections, the math sections, the strategies, the content that's gonna make the biggest difference, I strongly recommend checking out my SAT crash course. These are, as I said, those topics that we know are gonna show up on test day, are gonna give you the easiest place to improve your score and can make a really impactful difference in a very short period of time. So the entire course is basically designed to help you improve when you're cramming for the SAT, like you probably are if you're watching this video. Now, for those of you who are looking for help with your math sections, if you're doing really well and you really just wanna finish off those last 50, 60, 70 points on the math section or move up from high 600s to mid 700s, I strongly recommend checking out my advanced SAT math course. It helps you learn all the strategies, how to efficiently think through the different question types and really, really has fine-tuned so many students' skills and has helped so many of my students score in the high 700s or get perfect 800s. Now, if you're looking for a course which is gonna really teach you everything A to Z and guide you along the way, I strongly recommend checking out my Ultimate SAT course, especially if you're gonna be taking the test in December or you're already looking forward to taking the SAT in the spring.